Build systems in Sublime Text are a great way to execute external programs. And as we saw in last week's video, we can even make sure we don't have to keep creating a new build system for every project by using build variables to create templates. However, sometimes for some tools, you may need to execute that tool in a slightly different way with different arguments or a different control file. And that might make you think that you need to create multiple builds. However, Sublime also has us covered with this. There's a very powerful concept in build systems called variance. And that is the topic of today's video. <music> Hey, hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odan Erdo, and welcome to this week's video where we're continuing our discussion on build systems by talking about build system variants, a very powerful concept in build systems in Sublime Text that allow you to combine multiple builds into one file to make it a little bit easier to manage them. We're going to go into why you would want to do that and how these things work in just a moment, but before we get to that, I would like to point out that there is official documentation on build systems in Sublime Text. I've linked it down in the description below this video, along with a link to the playlist for the other build system videos that are in this series in case there's anything else that you're unsure of about builds as you continue through this particular video. Now a variant in the build system allows you to create a build that has multiple variations on the build, basically multiple builds inside of the same file. Now why would you want to do something like this? Well there's a couple of reasons we can think of off the top of our heads. First of all, if you have more than one build that's more or less related to taking the same action, then it's easier to have them all stored in one place so that if you need to get an overview of what builds you have in place or you need to make a modification, you only need to find and edit one file as opposed to trying to remember all of the files that you might need to edit. And of course, in a similar vein if you would like to share your build with yourself across multiple computers, even multiple operating systems, or with other users, it's a lot easier to share one file than it is to share multiple. So what exactly is a variant? Well, we've actually seen multiple examples of variants in the videos that we've done in this video series so far, because if we were to look at the build system that ships with Sublime Text for Python, we can see it has this key in it named variants, and that means that this is a build that contains variations. And in particular, it has one variation that gives it two builds. The main build will automatically run the current Python file in order to execute it, and the variation, which is named syntax check, will instead just compile your code to make sure that it is valid. Python code. And as a pro tip here, if you're trying to execute Python code and it doesn't seem to be doing anything, make sure that you're not using this variant because all this will do will compile your code. It won't actually run it. The other example we've seen is the makefile build that we've seen a couple of times so far through this video series, which is this one. And this also has a variant. Now, this is an example of using the exact same tool, again, with slightly different arguments because it's very common when you're using make to have the default target in your make file be to compile your code and there would be a target named clean for cleaning up all of the garbage files that are laying around like compiled object files and the like and this build makes it very easy to execute such a target. And as we can see here, the key of variants in build systems is that they allow you to provide a variation on an existing build. And what this actually means is that a variation on a build inherits all of the details of an existing build and just allows you to change just what you need in order to modify how that build actually operates. Now this concept is key to how variants work because of a couple of key reasons. First of all, it makes sure that your build maintains itself all inside of a single file, which again makes it easier to augment such a build or keep track of what it is it is doing. And it makes sure that you don't have to repeat yourself. And let me show you what I mean. Now we have this sample build system here and for demonstration purposes, this is simple. But remember, this concept will work with any build that you happen to create. This makes it a little bit easier to see exactly what's happening here. And this build has two keys in it. First of all, it has the shell command key that is echoing the contents of an environment variable. And secondly, we're using the env key to set environment variables while this build is actually running. And if you're unfamiliar with that, don't worry because that is going to be the topic of a future video in this video series. So, you know, buttons, you know the drill. Anyway, if we were to execute this build, we can see the message gets displayed exactly like we might expect it to. So let's pretend that this is a pretty complicated build and we need to make a slight variation on the command that's being executed. How could we do that? Well, one thing we could do, of course, is create a whole new build, but we don't want to do that because that's work and we want to get our stuff done as quickly as possible. So what we do is add a variant to this build. And to do that, we add a key named variance. And as the name suggests, this is a list of things. So the value of this has to be wrapped inside of square brackets because this is a list of items. And you can have as many 
variants in here as you like. In our example, we're going to create one. Now inside of this list, we add builds just like we would in the top level of the build. We can put any keys we want. So we're going to put braces in here. Now one thing you do have to put in every variant is a name key and we'll see why that's important in just a minute. So we're going to give this just a simple sample name and then what we can put in here is any build keys that we like. Now it's important to remember that this variant is inheriting the top level build. So all you really need to put inside of your variant is things that are different as a result of this being a different build. In our example, that is a shell command that executes a slightly different variation on the same command that we used previously. Do we need to include the env key in here? No, not unless we want to change the environment variables. Otherwise, it's just going to inherit the other one. And of course, again, if you had a more complicated build system, you might need to do something entirely different here, depending on what the build is actually doing. And with this in place, all we have to do is execute this build. Now, because there's a variant here, I'm going to use tools build with. I'm using the key binding for that, but you can find that in the menu if you like. And that's going to pop us up this chooser that says, hey, there's multiple builds here. Which one would you like to use? And we can see why it's important to include a name in our variants, because that is what's used to distinguish all of the builds. The first item here is the main build based on the name of the file that this is stored in. And the second one, and all succeeding ones, if there were more than one, would be the variant, which has the name that was specified inside of the item. And all we have to do is now choose that item and the build variation runs. We can see it's displaying the different message, but it still inherited the other information from the build. Now, if you imagine you had your own more complicated build, you can see why it would be very valuable to create variations on the build and override just what you need to be changed. Different program to be executed, different arguments to be provided, different file name to be created, things of that nature. And of course, there are other things that we can do with this as well. For example, there is a way to make a variation on a build that changes things depending on what operating system you happen to be running the build on. So if you run Sublime Text across Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, you can use different tools and the the same build file. That and other topics will be covered in upcoming videos in this series. That's all we have for this one. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please use those buttons down below. And until the next video, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.